Hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle, episode two. I'm your host, and uh, Michelle, for right now, is the executive producer, the producer, the <laughs> camera person, and the key grip. So, thank you. Welcome to our home in sunny Saugatuck, and welcome to our kitchen. We're all about teaching you how to make coffee at home, and last time we talked about the Chemex, and this time we want to talk about how to use an auto drip machine. And we have a 12 cup Cuisinart right here. It's a pretty basic machine with not a lot of bells and whistles. And frankly, I don't think we need a lot of bells and whistles when using an auto drip machine, but you'll decide on that. Uh, some of the features that I like about the Cuisinart, or actually the number one feature I like, is that it has a Swiss gold filter. And it, that comes standard uh, with this 12 cup brewer. And I prefer gold filters because paper filters, one, are a little wasteful, and two, uh, they take out a lot of flavor from the coffee. So uh, standard gold filter, cone-shaped, pretty ideal. It also comes with a water filter right here, although we find that unnecessary. We use spring water. It's got minerals in it. We like the minerals. We think it's good for our body, but actually it's good for the brew also. It, it does a better extraction when there's minerals in the water. If you need to use tap water, that's fine. You just want to run it through a Brita filter, get some of that chlorine out and so on. But one thing to think about is if your water is softened, it creates water tension that will create a different extraction. And by different, I mean a little poor. In our stores, for example, uh, we often have to soften our water, but we never soften the water that goes to our brewers because it changes the taste of the coffee. Like any brewer, it has a carafe uh, with markers on it and a hot plate. But you'll find out later, we really don't like hot plates. The first thing we have to do in any coffee process is figure out the coffee and water ratio. And as we've explained before, uh, the golden rule is one to two tablespoons of coffee per six ounces of water. Now a problem with auto drip manufacturers is, is their cups are not standard. Uh, and in this case, the Cuisinart, each cup is five ounces and not six. So although it says it's a 12 cup brewer, per the standards of our industry, it's technically a 10 cup brewer. Now, when you first get started, you need to kind of figure out where your mark is. And by that, I mean where to fill the water and how much coffee to put in to make a standard two cups of coffee. Now, we use big cups, and frankly, they're not even cups, they're mugs. These are 16 ounce mugs, but we like big mugs of coffee in this household. And so we're picking our favorite mugs here, and we're going to figure out where our mark is. And to do that, I'm gonna get a little measurer. Now, you won't have to do this forever. It's just to do it the first time so that you can figure out where your mark is for your coffee on your brewer. Now, I don't fill that coffee cup all the way full, and the reason I don't is we need to leave room for cream or sugar, or we need room to walk around with our cup of coffee without spilling it. And I'm just going to measure off two cups right out the gate here. And that probably will bring us to about 30 ounces. That's a little shy. But we're gonna add a little bit more water. And the reason we do that is the coffee itself, the coffee grounds absorb water too. So if we're looking to get the exact amount back out that we put in, we have to add a little bit of extra. And now I'll get this in here. All right, if we take a look at this, yep, the mark is just below the seven mark, and I think that that's about right for these two 16 ounce cups. It'll produce about 30 ounces of coffee. Let me go ahead and get that in. I have to pour it carefully. It's a pretty narrow gap. Most reservoirs are just at the rear of the machine. Down to the last 
strap there, get the lid on. And when I put this in, it'll be notable that this will sort of kick up, right? You can hear a little click. And that's an auto shut off, so that if you were to take the burner away in mid brew, it wouldn't keep dripping down under the hot plate. And so that's a good feature uh, to have. All right, now we need to be concerned uh, about how much coffee. So we're making about 30 ounces of coffee. We're saying the standard is six ounces per cup. That means we've got to have five cups. So let me get my coffee. And I've pre ground some. We like to get it full bean here at the house and then grind it up for a day or two in advance as long as you keep it in an airtight container it's fine it'll be as fresh as can be as a matter of fact I took that lid off and oh my god does that smell good so five cups for us it'll be 10 tablespoons of coffee seven eight nine, 10. Now, if you want lighter flavor, you just go one tablespoon per, and that would be five. Now we like really strong coffee, so I always like just adding a little extra, keeps my wife very happy. <laughs> and you know, the thing about good coffee, or when your coffee is good, you can use as much or as little as you want, and it'll always taste great. And that's the difference between a quality coffee and some of those other coffees that might come in a can or something like that. Because if you use too much coffee out of, out of coffee that comes from a can, what you'll find is it'll be super bitter and it'll make your spine contort and it'll make your head shiver if you drink that. And you don't want that. But when you use quality coffee like Big B Best or just any, any brew from Big B, uh, you can use as much or as little as you want. So let me go ahead and get that started. It's just a simple flip of the switch. And what I think I'm gonna do is time this. So let me go ahead and get a timer pulled up here. All right, hit reset on that. So I don't know if you can hear it, but I just heard the first gurgle, okay? And that first gurgle is just gonna spit out a few drops of water. Yep, I can see there's a few drops of water. I don't know if you remember when we did the Chemex, we talked about blooming the coffee first. And so I'm not even setting the timer yet. And the reason is, is because I want the coffee to bloom a little bit. So there's just a little bit of water coming down uh, right now, but it won't really be dripping in significance down here. And if you'll just come in a little bit closer here and we'll take a look. We can just see the grounds are starting to wet a little bit right there. Let me get that spray head back down. All right, and once it's bloomed a little bit, I'm gonna start the timer. And the reason I'm timing the coffee is this. With, with an auto drip machine, there aren't a lot of variables that you can control. But the one thing you can control is the flow rate of the coffee. Now, the way we control the flow rate is by the coarseness of the grind. And what we're looking to do is to get the, the coffee to start after bloom to finish in about four minutes. And if it takes a little bit longer or it takes a little bit less by 30 seconds or so, that's fine, okay? But if it's too long or too short, what you have to correct is the coarseness of your grind. And I want you to think about gravel versus sand, right? If you pour through sand, the water will take a lot longer to get through than if you pour through gravel, it'll go through really quickly, okay? So if it's taking too long, it means your grind is too fine. And if it's going too short, it means your grind is too coarse. And so that's something you can play with in your grinder. And we'll talk about grinders at a later episode. But we're looking for this to come out in about four minutes. Right now we're at about minute 15. So, you know, I do want to talk about a couple other things. One is our owner operators. Just a minute, I'm going to pick up my dog here. Because my dog's getting a little grumpy. <laughs> and this dog has diabetes and is blind. So, and she's an old dog, but we love her. So, 
Our owner operators right now, with this COVID-19 thing going on, the most remarkable thing that they're doing is they're giving away a free cup of coffee to all first responders, and they're giving away a free cup of coffee to all hospital workers with ID. And I just think that that's amazing. These guys are struggling themselves, and yet they're, they're giving to the givers, and I really love that. And I did want to mention that the Sam Bernstein Law Firm, too, is supporting that by using their marketing dollars to get that word out all over. And I just want to thank everybody for that. I'm going to put this little gal down. Hopefully she'll quieten down a little bit. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you where to get this coffee. The best place, I think, is from a Big B coffee. And uh, all our Big B's, uh, minus 30% of them, are um, still open. And uh, it would it would make the heart of the owner operators swell if you would stop by on your way to the grocery store on the way to the pharmacy or what have you and grab a, a grab a bag of coffee hopefully big be best they'll grind it for you they'll give it to you whole bean however you want it that's how they'll give it to you other places you can get it of course is bigby.com amazon and then we do sell coffee too at sam's club and at costco on a regional basis i wanted to share with you a little bit one of my first experiences with coffee. You know, people ask me all the time, why coffee, Bob? Well, I was actually born in Europe, Augsburg, Germany, uh, Bavaria to be exact. And as a, as a young boy, I have a very vivid memory. And that memory was of walking to a shop. It wasn't a coffee shop, it was a grind shop. And in Germany, you made your coffee at home, probably using something more like a Chemex, and you got your coffee on a regular basis from a grind shop. And you would walk into a grind shop that would be not much bigger than this kitchen right here. And there would be a bunch of Malcolm grinders. And there would be every kind of coffee you could imagine. And you would go in and you would order your coffee to be freshly ground and then put it in an airtight container to be used in the next couple of days. But I just remember the aroma of that. That the aroma was overwhelming, but in the most beautiful way. So, that's one of the reasons why I love coffee so much. I just love the smell. I do love the taste, too. All right. Well, we're at four minutes and 20 seconds. I can begin to hear the end gurgle. I don't know if you can hear that, right? And I just want to check where we are in our mark. Yeah, we're almost to that number six right there. Now we started with seven, but we lost some of the water to the ground. And that's why it's gonna end up at six in the end. Yep, you can hear it get its final gasp right now. Let's take a look at what's going on on the inside too, as that last steam comes through. Beautiful, really beautiful. And of course the aroma is quite awesome. Now I'm gonna turn this off right away. And the reason I'm doing that is a hot plate is never good for coffee. Because if you have a hot plate on coffee, it just cooks it. And what's happening is you evaporate the water and you concentrate the bitters. And so it's just much better to put it in a thermal carafe. Now, I've got my thermos here because I like hiking. And what I've done is, before we got started, I put a little hot water in here. And that's how you make a thermos really work really well, a thermos or a thermal carafe. But I'm not gonna let that hot water go to waste. What I'm gonna do is preheat our cups. Actually, I don't need that one. I'm just going to preheat this cup right here. All right. We'll call that preheated. And we'll go ahead and pour ourselves a cup of coffee. Now, if there's two of you, you can just pour two cups right away, but my wife's theoretically not up yet. 
although she's filming <laughs> right now. And what I want to do with this cup is I like to go for walks in the woods. And I'm going to take this with me on that walk. There's a place I like to go to called the Crow's Nest. And when I get there, I like to sit on the log that's there. It looks over Lake Michigan and sit down and have a cup of coffee. Now I got to do one other thing. I want to get rid of the grounds that are in the coffee. And the reason I do that, I save them. You can see there's a whole bunch here. It looks like rich soil. And on that note, that's exactly why I'm saving it. These coffee grounds are rich in nitrogen. And these coffee grounds are rich in carbon. And anytime we can take and put nitrogen or carbon back in the soil for our plants, it's really great. So if you have a flower bed, a vegetable bed, doesn't really matter. If you put this down with your soil to sprinkle it around, it'll be perfect. But you can use it on shrubs or trees, and frankly, you can uh, spread it around in your grass if you want. Uh, and I think when it rains, it makes your lawn smell like coffee. So, uh, I'm going to take a sip of this coffee, which just looks scrumptious. Mm. There's just nothing better than your first sip. Alright, that's all we got on the auto trip. But I just wanted to say this one last thing, and that is this. If you love the world, the world will love you back.